So whereas in the getting it stage, the teacher is primarily a guide, and during the using it stage, the teacher's role shifts to that of challenging students. During the proving it stage, the teacher is definitely the facilitator. And while we are building confidence throughout this whole process in a scaffolded way, we never ceased to concentrate on building students' confidence, particularly during this proving it stage. I would say that there are three types of proving it that the students could engage in. The first one would be called the spontaneous use of language. And that could be in response to something a teacher says or a native speaker says, or um, in response to another student. The second would be when a student is willing and able to initiate some kind of a, a conversation or a comment in the target language. And the third would be when they are asked to represent what they know in some form. If we look at spontaneity and initiation, we try to create opportunities for that to happen. And one good way for that to happen would be through field trips. You might arrange to take your class, for example, to a restaurant where that cultures uh, or the language is spoken and uh, cultural foods are tasted. There might be a festival that is held representing that language and culture. And so that type of a field trip would encourage spontaneous use of the language and maybe even the initiation. You might also invite native speakers in because those would be opportunities for spontaneity and initiation. Similarly, as a teacher, you want to encourage hallway chat. Opportunities, even with simple greetings or uh, questions of how you're doing, would um, encourage that use of the language. What's more likely to happen would be the representation of what students know. And we would say that that representation would take place through projects. Projects such as a retail, where the students have had an experience or uh, seen a movie or read a book and retell about that experience. That isn't quite the same, but is certainly akin to storytelling, where a student might actually learn a story or make up a story and from memory present that story, perhaps with props. Role plays are also very popular and sometimes known as skits. All the way we are trying to develop, um, again, automaticity, and the use of all of the skills, listening, speaking, reading, writing, and cultural integration. And uh, make the activities that we um, are creating for our students to be personal, meaningful, and involve um, as much creativity as possible. When we think of designing the assignment for um, a, a, a proving it activity, there are a few uh, very helpful tips. We can often think about rafters to help us form the assignment. And that means that as we develop uh, the assignment, we think about the role that we're asking the student to play, the audience to whom that student is formulating some kind of a response, the form that that would take, whether it would be um, a brochure if it is something written, or a menu, or uh, perhaps part of a newspaper, or if it's an oral form, whether it would be a, a speech, or an interview, or a television commercial. What would be the precise topic of the assignment? Make sure that however it's presented, it is engaging, that there is a reason or purpose that's connected to the world beyond the classroom, and it's always helpful to use one strong verb in the assignment description so the students know exactly what is expected of them. Of course, as you're presenting or thinking about your assignment, you want to be thinking about a number of additional criteria. You're going to have to use differentiation. And that means that you're going to have a variety of ability levels in your classroom. So that whatever the rafters assignment is, you want it to, pe to appeal to a number of student ability levels. As you move through this, um, to this stage, students should become increasingly more independent. That means no or very little support. Of course, with differentiation, it may mean that some of the students in the class do need more support than others. As you're 
formulating your assignment, you want to make sure that you provide criteria. And you want to provide criteria in a way that's going to help students use their creativity and figure out how to integrate all of that criteria in an interesting way. You're going to go back and look at all of the giving it inputs that you had um, uh, taught your students so that they integrate many aspects into this assignment. You're going to want to give them a time limit to complete the assignment and obviously give them preparation time uh, to prepare. Even during the um, assignment presentation, for example, if it's an oral presentation, the other students should have opportunities to listen to the presentation and maybe to formulate some questions about the presentation. Those questions can also integrate spontaneity and involve some initiative. So, during the proving it stage, we are now moving much closer to the assessment of learning, whereas prior to uh, this stage, the getting it and the using it, the assessment on the teacher's part is a little bit more for learning. 